we better begin with those big, big games at the weekend. Uh, I better get it out of the way first. Liam, we asked you for two words last week. You, you, you finally uttered East Kerry and Mid Kerry. Uh, was it as easy as you thought? Um, I suppose the first the first game Saturday night was. Um, I did think that Mid Kerry would probably have too much for for, for Field Rangers, and that and that's the way it seemed to seem to 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 go. Uh, the second game, we all knew the, the game on Sunday was going to be a, a humdinger, and, and it proved that. Now conditions over the weekend, probably for for the four teams, where uh, it was it wasn't uh, it wasn't there wasn't, wasn't a nicer day for for lovely dandy football. Mm-hmm. But um, no, the, in fairness to, to the four teams, they put up for, uh, the great battles. And um, look, we'll all be talking about the game on Sunday. Field Rangers probably after a great year in the in the, in the county championship, they have taken great great strides, and I hope they can continue with that now and and build because we need we need something out in our carry you know, to be to be to be proud proud and proud and, or I could say in the in the county championship, and I think they are they are after coming mm. coming forward. I I think regardless of the result, John, they will be one of the stories of the county championship. They didn't win it; they, they came from somewhere from nowhere really. Um, and I suppose, in fairness, on the night they probably didn't perform to what they would have been thinking that they could have. Did the conditions across both games? turn average players into better players because some of the big performances over the weekend I mean the conditions were were, were cat simply but there were some massive performances in, in, in both teams in both games I'm even thinking Barry O'Mahony there you know against the wind kicking three points Mid Kerry had plenty of stars uh, even though we, we, we'll go along and say that the weather conditions messed it up for a lot of people but a lot of good players stood up to him There's no doubt they did Donald and you know it was conditions they were real level of the weekend in fairness you know wind and rain very difficult if you had the rain or the wind, but with both it was, it was, and while the pitch was in great condition, it was slippery. You know, a lot of rain fell. But as you said, it was a great year for Field Rangers, great year for North Kerry football, in fairness, great boost, and it just goes to show uh, a bit of organisation, good management team, players bought into it. They'd be disappointed with their performance on Saturday night. And, you know, something that surprised me as well was uh, allegedly they won the toss and went against the wind. Mm, Usually the underdogs would be going and take every advantage uh, because if you look at it, the six-point winning margin at the end for Mid-Kerry, it, it, it flattered Field Rangers, really, you know. But they stayed going. They never gave up hope. And, you know, some of their some of their marquee players or some of their better players didn't perform. Um, but they kept going to the very end. They have a good bench, a lot of good young fellas. And like Liam said, I think the key now is to build on it. You know, great confidence. Great. It's a great boost for North Kerry in general. You know, there's a feel-good factor, even though they were beaten, made great strides from winning no game last year to getting to the semi-final and, uh, you know, something to work on. Mm-hmm. But uh, but for Field, for Mid Kerry and for East Kerry, you know, the, the Mid Kerry dug deep. Uh, a lot of their key, uh, good players played well and, you know, the likes of Mike Breen and we'll talk about him later on. Ian O'Connor, they led by example, got great scores mm-hmm. and deserved their win. And, you know, the England East Kerry real cracker in bad conditions yeah we'll break down both games now fairly shortly and if you want to join the conversation tonight please do 0667123666 Ivan's on the phone there he'll take down the notes and 0833033300 there on text or whatsapp send us in a couple of comments and the comments have been coming in I'm going to run through a couple of comments fairly quickly um, th- th- some of them of course game related you must you must have seen my notes John because the first comment was did Field Rangers win the toss and decide to play against the win what madness was that I think you've addressed that uh, it, 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 I, I suppose in high Inside. I suppose everybody has a plan. The plan didn't work, you know. You, and I think, look, in fairness, maybe the, the idea was we've often been in that position. It, make, it might take you ten or fifteen minutes to get into the yeah. game, and then when you're in it, you have the wind that you're back in the second half. It just didn't work the last night, and mm-hmm. you, you you try these things. Obviously, all these are premeditated. You have the decision made, and you go with it, and you live by the sword or die by the sword. Yeah, Field Ranger would have been very disappointed with their start, though. I mean, four points they didn't put their hand on the ball in in a real tackle in in, in four or five minutes. None of the games they'd played previous to that were, were they that far behind that early in the game and I suppose that gave Mead Carey that extra confidence and I mean Liam Carey he, he kicked some savage points there very early on he kicked some savage points and I think it was a different Liam Carey from what we saw in Fishtola Stadium tended to take a bit out of the, the ball that day you know the extra solo there was none of that the last night it was nearly shooting side it was delivering on side and it worked really well himself and Aon O'Connor they were the tormentors in chief but as you said Cahal Keane to be fair to him, the movement was poor by his defenders in midfield. They found it difficult. They couldn't get the ball, really. Oh. And Mick Kerry dictated and dominated. They did what Field Rangers needed to do. 
and and they, that was the foothold they got in the first ten minutes. Yeah, John, um, or Liam, look, looking at it, you're, you're four points down. You've a gale of wind to go. Um, what's going through the, the management at at that point in time? I mean, I, I'm sure they're shell shocked at the start. They're saying, "My God, what's happening?" Uh, you've been on the sideline. What, what's the plan then? Is is it just to knuckle down the best you can? Uh, I mean, the, the gap just grew and grew and grew. I mean, there were nine points down at half time. I mean, that, that that was a huge gap. There were, yeah, and there, it was five minutes before they even got a pass the halfway line and they were really struggling and I even saw Joby Costello jump out of the dugout and run up the side of the field they needed to get a, a handy kick out they were struggling even in the kick outs mm-hmm. and um, it, it was just position it was just it? position they couldn't get their hands in it and you do come across games like that John where you would you know, struggle to get your hands in the ball and even when you got your hands in the ball it was easily dropped you know, and it was dispossessed but look Mick Kerry I suppose they were the, the one team that really took advantage of the wind the weekend you know, from the word go you know, they, they attacked early uh, Liam, Liam Carey you know, from the week before he was taking that little hop and solo the last day he was more direct and it, re- it really kind of drove drove me carry on Ian O'Connor is the chief around uh, around the, the half hour line there he's even telling all the young fellas you now Keith Evans <coughs> you have Keith Evans and you had uh, Fieker Clifford there around the 40 as well who the workmanship by the both of them were fantastic but they had the game won by half time you know, I think the scoreline flattered Field Rangers in the end I you know Mick Kerry were probably a, a good 10 point team better than them mm-hmm. uh, I do think that if if there was more time left I think Mick Kerry had, had the firepower to, to drive on and we spoke about that here last week that we did think that Field Rangers would struggle with firepower they didn't you know, relying a lot on Barry Mann here and Martin Stack mm-hmm. like Martin's a great Free taker. No, I thought Mick Kerry did a very shrewd move. They they, they brought Nathan Nathan Breen on, yeah, yeah. and he he nullified him completely. Mike Breen was on Barry Manahy, and then you had Pat Kinney doing what Pat does best. He was just sweeping up around the the, the back line. You know, so so from the word go, Mick Kerry had their homework done. They got off to a great start, and Field Rangers really struggled. Mm-hmm. Liam, how much of an impact would it be that that? Mid Kerry had four intermediate clubs with him. I mean, any one of them could be seen or tomorrow, like uh, on their own. Field Rangers didn't have that luxury. I mean, yeah. uh, for, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think they're nearly all junior teams. If they are all junior teams, at this stage of the competition, when it's really, really on the line, the better quality players tend to win more games. Exactly, and not they're playing a higher level of football all year, and it, and it means a lot. And that's why I do think when you look, when you sit back at the start of the championship and you're looking at all these teams, you now East Kerry, you see all the clubs in East Kerry. You know they can say what they want that they have all these stars, but it's the clubs that are putting in the effort. You know the Listroys, the Fossers, you know the you you could say the lower, the lesser clubs in East Kerry, they're not the Crokes, but they're putting in just as much work underage, and that has to go across the board into North Kerry. You know it's grand to say, oh sure, it's only the county league, but the higher you play up in the county league, when it comes to big games then no, you're thinking faster you're playing faster I even sat with St. Kieran's down through the years ourselves no, we, we got to semi-final there a, a few years back when we met Tingle but it was just that we probably had a Division 4 corner back or a Division 4 wing back marking a Division 1 footballer mm-hmm. who was our Division 4 not saying that it really was a Division but, they, they but were the it's just different thinking they were, but they were way quicker yeah. way quicker thinking and that's what happens when you come to semi-final of a county championship or even an intermediate championship you know, everything is stepped up a level and I do think that's that's where the likes of the Knockery teams and you know, the county league and these and these champ- intermediate championships you now if they can put in the effort and their age keep driving forward and you know, you know play at a high level Mm-hmm. More comes coming in, of course. Uh, Mayo versus Ross, Ross Common Donald. Mayo always win those games. He says. Uh, obviously, the colours of Mid Kerry and Field Rangers very smart. Uh, I'd, I'd be delighted to know what did the, the panel think of the Mike Breen versus Barry O'Mahony clash. Uh, it looked very early on like there was only one winner in Mike Breen, but by the end of it, uh, Barry O'Mahony had put his stamp on that game, John. Yeah, it's, the comment is spot on. I think Mike Breen was uh, very influential. He used his, his experience. Uh, his time in with Kerry, you could see it, and, and that's adding to what Liam said. P- in training at that level and that intensity, he did really well. Um, but the longer the game went on, uh, the more Barry Man he grew into the game. Uh, it was a lot easier for Mike Breen with the possession that Mitt Kerry had. Mm-hmm. Uh, Field Rangers found it difficult to get it up to their forward division, and uh, Breen was in a pivotal position. He was always available as a link man, uh, but Mahoney never gave up, you know. He, you're, you, you need your main players to, to perform on the biggest day and Barry O'Mahony certainly did that he might have been beaten for balls he might have put balls astray but he kept going he showed a great attitude 
kicked three great points and you know he brought field rangers back into a respectable position really nearly single handedly up front mm -hmm. because Martin Stack was well marked inside very little ball going into him and the ball he went in was less than 50-50 very difficult to win it but certainly Barry Mahoney I think he's been one of the players of the championship I think he's certainly a player that Jack and his management team will have a look at and uh, you know he, he, he acquitted himself very well overall mm -hmm. uh, Mid Kerry look I, I suppose like you said Liam they've they, they done the business before half time you know they kind of switched off one of the engines at least on, on, on the plane uh, would they be disappointed though that they, they conceded was it five or six points in a row I mean even on a game when you're kind of hitting home to victory or is the team at that stage in their head they're in the semi-final they don't want to get injured or they're in the final they don't want to put in a, a tackle to get injured or get ruled out the game is won it's been won for an early stage out will Mid Kerry feel that this kind of lapse in concentration might affect him going into the final? Well, yeah, I suppose, look, a, a couple of people said to me that you know, Mick Kerry would be better off if they got a better challenge. You know, um, I suppose, look, we, we've been with teams that were, have been winning games at half-time well. You know, that there is that little kind of a switch that switched off. Larry, I see Mike, Mike Breen there, probably in the second half, probably sat a little bit deeper in front of his, in front of his full back line. I think they just wanted to make sure they was going to concede no goals. You know, so, yeah, you, it's, it's, it's something that's there with teams and it's very hard to, to come out to, to put a finger on it that they do. They, as much as it would be roaring in the sideline and try to keep it going, and then when your substitutions come in, kind of upsets the flow of the game as well. But, uh, yeah, I do think Mick Kerry did turn off the switch and um, I don't think they can afford to do that in the county final. No, I don't think they will. You know, if you're if you're a player that and they can, when you get to a county final, you might only get to one of them in your career. You know, so you'd um, you'd want to be really switched on, and especially against East Kerry because they have players all over the field that can hurt you. Mm -hmm, absolutely. I uh, was listening to RT's coverage at the weekend of Field Rangers and Mid Kerry, and felt it was very poor. They mentioned on three occasions that Mary Jo Corn won nine All Ireland Senior Medals. What's wrong with that statement? <laughs> There's not much wrong with it. She won nine. <laughs> she, she, well, well, there's plenty wrong with it because she won ten. <laughs> was it ten? <laughs> she right. won ten. Yeah. But yeah. to be fair to her, were her, you, her, were, her you son? Up, were you up in the box uh, telling Marty those figures? Were you? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I know what Google was using <laughs> for that. Uh, but her son Sean Coffey is probably or probably the standout goalkeeper of the championship so far. Outstanding, really. Yeah. So calm, and even his kickouts, and he's never seems frustrated. Oh. Or, no, he even he, when they make a mistake, he's yeah. just. He no. never seems to be in a rush to no, get there. Never, <laughs> no, <laughs> never panics. And, he's, uh, and what I like about him, he doesn't want to come out the field soloing the ball either. Yes, so no, he just wants to do his job and he's, yeah, he's fantastic so far. He'll do it all school and, and, and that's the right way to do it two at times. Now, you're listening to Terrace Talk 0667123666 and you can text us on 0833033300. Plenty of comments coming in. Um, we'll get to some of them when, when we hit, the, hit various comments, I suppose. Uh, the other one that I, I'd like to <laughs> hear is Donald tuning in from Rochester New York and I'm delighted that you mentioned Tarbert Tarbert's North Kerry win over Belly Dunhill made my night <laughs> fair play <laughs> you're, you're, you're very happy out there fair play now uh, a one point win East Kerry uh, I thought Dingle would, 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 would steal this and for long stages they looked like they, they, they could have stole it uh, and in the end uh, John it was a bit of a smash and grab by East Kerry wasn't it it was it looked as if Dingle had it Donald you know they had uh, they had managed the game very well um, they were the point up and then you know, Paul O'Shea, a massive kick, really, in terrible conditions. There was there was some superb scores kicked on a very bad day for kicking, to be honest. Did, did all the scores were great scores. Yeah, well, I, I can't remember one that you say was handy. I mean, Paul Guinea yeah. kicked some massive one, Barry Sullivan drove exactly, two yeah. our way through, mm -hmm. and, and nearly all these scary scores were, were, were vital scores. The goal was probably the, the scrappy yeah, score of the morning. I feel sorry for, for Gavin O'Coran in goals. He had mm -hmm. made two great stops, yeah. and the third effort yeah. they got at Paddy Clifford. But Paul O'Shea kicked a super point to draw it but like you know oh, was that his first touch uh, first touch was his first touch ball yeah. delivered kick yeah. bang score it was his first touch but the, the winning point like was it was a point if you were coaching young fellas Paul Murphy like you know we're talking about leaders he took on the responsibility you know it had to be spot on the kick because if it wasn't it would have gone dreadfully wide mm -hmm. and he just caught it and from the minute from where we were lame the minute he kicked it you know it was over the bar it was a superb kick it was worthy of winning any game but as a neutral, you'd feel sorry for Dingle. Uh, they left everything on the pitch. Uh, I suppose the performance of Paul Ganey, he's absolutely in the top of his game. He's playing some superb football. His leadership qualities, the scores he got, what he manufactured, and the goal in itself, his, his management mm -hmm. and his, his dummies and his control for the goal to pass it off to Dylan, I thought it was, it was top class. Uh, they left, they gave everything. But East Kerry, 
Uh, I said during the week I felt Dingle could do it, but East Kerry, they're real champions. Mm -hmm. They don't appear to be firing in all cylinders, but they seem to have a different player to come up and take the responsibility and take it on, and that's the sign of a great team. And, you know, they deserve to win in the end. Uh, the, two, the two last scores, would, would you deserve to win any game with those scores? Yeah, there were, su there were super scores, Paul Murphy. Of course, he got the first score of the game as well, and he got to the second one. My God, he, he outscored David Clifford 2-1 yesterday, and, in the, and even from play, 2-0. Um, I suppose a lot of people were, were talking about David Clifford versus Tom O'Sullivan, David Clifford versus Mark O'Connor. How did you see those matchups go yesterday, Liam? Yeah, look, I suppose, look, the big thing that everyone's talking about is David, David Clifford's performance, but I should know that people spot David Clifford, and it was something I was watching towards the end. You know, he was pulling two and three players away from the play. He knew he wasn't he wasn't firing himself. He was decoy. And he was decoy. He was happy enough to stand over the sideline and not touch the ball and once 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 East Kerry were, were winning. And that's the way David is. David is is a kind of a player that he is happy enough not scoring once East Kerry win. We've all come across players that they want to kick ten points but they don't care if they win or lose. Whereas David was different and, and towards the end there, why Tom Sullivan was open, why pa um, Paul O'Shea was open, was there was three fellas standing beside David Clifford. You know, so they're they're small things as as, as poor as David did from play, mm -hmm. he does he does a lot a lot on the field as well. Very intelligent footballer. Mark O'Connor, yeah, I suppose look, I thought from the start when they put him in full forward and when they had the breeze we remember for the hot ball, mm -hmm. they put yeah. him inside beside Paul and the first, it was, you could see it was a training ground move and the first spot they won the hop and it was just direct and the wind took it. No, I thought they could might have utilised him a small bit more in there with the breeze. But I suppose it was a kind of a breeze that was very hard from stop the ball going over the in line. It would have to be a nice a nice kicker to kick it in. But I'd say Mark had a lot more to do yesterday on the footballers he was marking than he did the week before. Yeah. You know, East Kerry, they have a lot of players around the field who are good footballers. He had his hands full, whereas the week before he was gliding around the place and he had a lot more space. Didn't have that yesterday. You know, so, but I would... I, I would I would say I'd give credit to East Kerry for that because they they they, they worked him around the place very well. Now, Dingle will be disappointed leading going into injury time. No, they were leading going into injury time. No, East Kerry down to 14 minutes. there was nothing men. they could have done. I mean, the, 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 the two scores were fantastic scores. Another night, there would have been two bad wides. I suppose you, you, you the, the really thing that stands out for me is the Tom Sullivan free. Mm -hmm. I thought if he put... He, he should have killed it. You know, it was a turnover and it was down the field if that was killed it was another 40 maybe 50 seconds gone off the clock they could have even won the kick out because they were they were they were hitting it at the time on, on the kick outs you know, he went short they turned it over and it's and, and the rest is history but there's one man I have to mention from Dingle is um, Durant I thought he'd uh, uh, he uh, sold David yeah. Clifford a dummy yesterday yeah and even the goal he yeah. dispossessed for the goal and towards the end, he actually dispossessed East Kerry game, but they won it back. Yeah. You know, he, he, had a fan, he had a fantastic he, game. Himself and Flaherty yesterday, of course, in Fair they, they were running up and down the field all day. I mean, they, 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 they were working really, really, off. really, really hard at, at, at work. Yeah. Yeah. That was the Dingle plan, really, wasn't it? I, I mean, they, they, they didn't set themselves up the traditional way with the wind as such. I mean, no. they, they played as if they were playing against the wind, even though they had even the wind. Even though they had the wind, and it suited them in the second half. It suited them in the second half, but yeah. did they not have enough scores on the board at half time? I mean, they got the three points very close together Tom Sullivan Paul Ganey and, and Dylan Ganey could have cracked the back of the net with, with a shot that went over the bar did they need that goal? they needed a goal but we even set it up in the box to the seven John teacher that Dingle are a goal scoring team and you could see they, you know, they always kind of think they'll get a goal mm -hmm. and I'd say that's the way they went they, in that they, we they will get a goal they create chances for they goals they create chances yeah they do create chances and when the goal went in and, for, and, it's, and it's, it's like in a soccer match you know, often here in the premiership the most dangerous time to concede is when you actually score a goal yourself mm -hmm. and unfortunately for Dingle East Kerry went down and rattled the net straight away so it, it nullified it whereas if they could have held on for that three, the, the three points or maybe take another point onto it you know, they, 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 they could have it would have given a bit of a boost and confidence but their, their goal was nullified so quick it kind of it was kind of a, it was a, a kind of it was a, it was a tough one for him yeah. Jerry Sullivan said afterwards John that of all the games they won this was a sweet one because they dug it out it um, and he's obviously referring to going down to 14 men as well I mean they, they lost their influential midfielder yeah. there as Ronan Buckley as well Um they obviously w went to some place that they haven't gone so far this season. I mean, it, they were a joy to watch in their opening game against Rahali. is absolutely fantastic. They hadn't had much form. They didn't have a whole lot of form through the game, but when it was in the melting pot, they had the players, didn't they? They had the players, and, and you know, with five minutes to go, maybe seven minutes to go, we were saying it, Liam, myself, they, they appear to be at leggy. 
you know, Dingle were first to the ball, Barry Sullivan was bossing it around the middle and you'd say, it's Dingle's day. But they had the guys, they were here Paul O'Shea, Paul Murphy, you know, uh, Paddy Clifford, he never stopped running. And you could see what it meant to them afterwards, you know, Seamus Minan and um, uh, Jerry Sullivan and the lads, uh, Arthur Fitzgerald, you know, they were really, there were scenes of joy on that sideline with mentors and, you know, it, it meant so much to them. They knew they went to the well it was a real game, you know, they had to dig deep and it's a sign of champions, to be fair. You know, when the writing is on the wall, your backs are to the wall, you're a pint down, where are you going to get the score from? Your marquee player, like Liam said, he was taking guys out of the play, but he wasn't influential, so who was going to do it? Mm-hmm. And, you know, two super scores. And I suppose, as we're on it, we have to mention the refereeing over the weekend, to be fair. Yep. Donald mm-hmm. Casey and Paul Hayes, I thought they were absolutely outstanding. Uh, of course, there was the odd one that went. But in terrible conditions, they could have been flashing cards all day long. They used common sense. And I think the big qu- we said at Liam is the, the respect that the 30 odd players on both teams had for them. They left the play go. They did their business when they had to do it. And I think it, it, it actually added to, to, particularly to the second game, mm-hmm. and particularly to the second half of the second game. You know, it was real championship and fair play to them. Uh, maybe a bit of common sense which we are told is not in the rule book, but I can tell you it was there yesterday and they, they, and on Saturday evening to a lesser extent, but both referees acquitted themselves very, very well and uh, I think it was it was great to see. Nobody was talking about the referees after each game. Mm-hmm. That's great. Mm-hmm. Actually, it, 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 it's funny that there's a comment there. I would like to know what the penalty of the refereeing at the weekend. I did not see anything negative on social media afterwards, so I suppose if you're not on social media, Donald, yeah. Casey and Paul Hayes, you've certainly done fantastic work. Uh, comment on, on the line as well. I was at the game yesterday in Chile and felt that the Despite the conditions, both sides really served up a fine game of football. But I felt the injury to Michael Ganey was the real turning point. Michael Ganey was a huge loss. Yeah, he's a huge loss, very influential. W- w- would Paul Murphy have scored that if Michael Ganey was on the field? It's a good question. Is he wouldn't have got the space and the time. Oh, I mean, Ganey oh. would have been on top of him. But apart from that, it's his work rate, his link play, his experience on the ball, his probing kicks. He gives a lovely ball into the forwards. and But you'd have to say, though, that the Dingles' heads didn't drop when he went off. No. You know, they, they were... But he was a huge loss. No. He's, he's, a, he's a, a man with inter-county experience. Yeah. He's a level above the ordinary club player. And he was a huge loss to Dingle. He was a, a, a massive loss to Dingle, absolutely. Um, OK, the final... We, we won't go into a preview of the final. We, we, we have plenty of time for that next week. And, and I suppose we'll talk about it in time. Um, what do East Kerry need to do, very briefly, John to see themselves win the cup again because they're not retaining because they're not since the cup <laughs> <laughs> everybody thinks they've won four in a row but I mean they haven't won it yeah I think it's going I think it's going to be East Kerry being honest with you uh, they're, they're the squad of players they have um, as we said different players pop up on different days that's the sign of a great team you know they're they're in a good place for Jerry Sullivan and Seamus and the lads because they haven't performed they're still a bit left and they're in the county final. And mid career they're in merit also and they've they've they were one of our favourites before it started. They're more like a club team as we've said previously. Um, you know, and it's going to be an intriguing final. It's going to be very interesting. Conditions could play a big part in it as well. But but to me at this point in time, East Kerry look to be the favourites. Mm. Liam, can mid Kerry work as hard as Dingle over an hour? They'll have to. But can yeah, they? And, and and even and the one thing that worries me with me Kerry is that there's there's a lot of good footballers there. You know, will good footballers be East Kerry? They're going to have to be a bit of devilish in, in them to. If, know, if, to if get you past. look at Spa and you look at Kinmare and you look at Dingle, all club teams, they all really made it difficult in their own games. They worked to, hard. To, they really worked hard. Worked even fair yeah. to Spa, even on the night. I mean, if if, if David Clifford hadn't come on the field, you know, it would have been much closer. I mean, Kinmare went out all the way down to the wire with him as well. Club team again. Dingle a club team. Is a club team suited to beat, or can another um, district team beat them? They are, because uh, to beat East Kerry, you have to have some sort of defensive structure. And at a club team, you have time to, to work on that all year. Whereas Mid Kerry, if they go man-to-man with East Kerry, I don't think they will they, they will prevail. You know, so they're going to have to get bodies back in front of the, uh, the East Kerry forward line. But it's the break then, is when they turn East Kerry over, can the lights of Liam Carney... You know, the, and these guys up front, can they punish? Um, when he's carry, when he when he's carry a break, when they get the ball up to, the, you know, to Dara Roach, uh, James O'Donoghue, David Clifford, they will punish you if they have room. 
But can Mick Kerry do that? That's going to be the million dollar question. That's something that they they that they'll have to if they want to prevail in this county final. I think up front they're going to have to get bodies back. You know, like they they, they won't be able to match East Kerry man to man, and that's why the clubs like if you look at Kilmayer, you look at Spa, Dingle, they had all bodies back. Mm. No, they made it hard for East Kerry to kick scores. No, East Kerry weren't going to get a goal in the last minute yesterday because the Dingle had so many bodies back. No, so it's it's up to me Kerry now to to come up with some sort of a system to to slow down the game, to get bodies back in front of the, this this star studded forward line, and for them have they the scoring power up front because to beat East Kerry you have to score yourself. You can't you can't rely on being completely defensive. You have to score. Is it in Liam Carney to 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 kick more than three or four points? He'll have to maybe kick one. I'd expect you'd have to maybe kick one. 12, 113, 114, depending on conditions, to be in the game against East Kerry next day. Have me carry players to do that. Liam Kerry. Liam Kerry, yeah. sorry. Yeah. We're well done, John. He's, he's only <laughs> the junior. <laughs> he's only the junior. <laughs> he's the junior. <laughs> he's the yeah. junior. Now, OK, let's get on to the real tough stuff. Comments coming in. Um, we, 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 we'll, we'll turn to the club championship. Big weekend next weekend, obviously, for, for the two clubs. They're looking at it now. They, they now know one of them is going to Munster. Um because obviously we have two districts in, in the final. Am I counting it right, lads? 20 different clubs represented in the county final. Districts need to be restricted to a maximum of four clubs, giving players. East Kerry would beat most teams in Ireland. Are Kerry the only county doing this? Strand Road listener. Dear God. He, can't, he, he couldn't walk down Rock Street last week, so <laughs> like, I, mean, I know Strand Road's a little bit around the corner, but uh, tread carefully. <laughs> it's the old It's the old thing. It's, it's the way it was. It's, it's tradition. It's, it's always been tradition, the way. Yeah, I uh, mean, if you think about it. Goes like, around the boat. Yeah. Look how many championships had the Crocs won down through the years? Yeah. Right. And, 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 and Austin Sex won it last year. Uh, won it last year, so it's not as if it's completely. Like, you know, for East Kerry haven't ran away with this county championship by no. any means. You know, so I do think that it's, it's, um, it's down to effort, it's down to preparation. And if teams can can do that, you'll give it a good rattle. Yeah, and just I think it's hugely competitive, Donald, this year's champ. As you said earlier on, the club teams, Spa, Kinmare, Temple, no. Look at the efforts they have yeah. and the performances they've put up. Like, mm. And it, it hasn't been a foregone conclusion in any game. And, you know, we have two divisional teams in the final, but they certainly earned it. Mm-hmm, absolutely. Uh, and just to prove that we can read everybody's comment out, call the whole thing off, lads. It's an absolute disgrace. Roll on the real county final, which is next Sunday in Killarney between Rahalis and Temple, no. No more districts. Let's <laughs> oh, <mighty laughs> do really tired of talking about districts. Um, let's talk about that game for a second. Rahalis and Temple, no. Let's want to take on a life of its own now, knowing that there, there is a big prize at the end of it. Dingle, of course, exiting. Um They've been sitting out for a while. Temple No, of course, I suppose, continued on. They, they got to the quarterfinal, lost to mid carry. Not, not a whole lot in it. Which one of these teams, John, is more suited, you think, to, to winning that the next day? If we're going in the county championship, Donald, it's going to be Temple No. Where are Cairns O'Reilly's at, is the question. Injury wise, players' availability Tommy Welch, uh, Jack Savage, you know, Karma Coffey, um, how are they? Will they be there? Forum is something that you cannot turn it around. It's not a switch. Mm-hmm. Temple knows for him and the championship has been excellent. They have a few injuries as well. I think Sean Sheehan, the midfielder, didn't play since the first round against Shannon Rangers. Adrian Spillane got a knock the last day. Uh, Gavin Crowley didn't play. Yeah. So those guys will be will be key to it. It remains to be seen what 15 will both teams put out. Yeah. But if we were to use the county championship as a yardstick, it would be advantage Temple no. Yeah. Liam, I'll correct him now. The first round they played against so Kerry in the draw. You're both back to novice lads. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking about novice lads, um, and brought it on nicely. Fair play to John. I knew that was an opening for me. Uh, the novice championship. Um, it's going ahead, obviously. The final is on next uh, weekend, next Saturday. Bale, of course, are in it. Not SD, sorry about that. Kilgarvan are in it, not Cremorne. Um, it's, it's, when we talk about the grassroots, you couldn't get more grassroots than novice football, John. I mean, obviously, I, I, from St. Michael's File more, it, it was a huge championship for us to get over the line. I remember Knock Nagashal beating us and we're going up to Austin Sack Park and it was like, my God, it was like going to the All-Ireland final and, and those dressing rooms weren't as big and there was a lot more fellas in it than I thought it actually even got us there to the whole final. But if you look at that, it, it, it's the grassroots. It's something very special uh, and it's something not to be overlooked, John. There's no doubt it's it's the final, that, it's the competition you're in. Uh, if you lose out in junior, you win to Navas, probably eight or ten teams. I know from ourselves back in 2013, we, we won the final against our local rivals, Bally Lanford, and we went on and we won the Munster junior B. Huge, huge for the village, huge for the, for the club. Um, and, you know, we played Beal at the weekend, we were beaten by a better team, no question about it. But, you know, Beal lads, their rural clubs are struggling with numbers. 
there's huge pride in your own club and you know Kilgarvan I know we've played them the last few years great sports people if you wanted to change a fixture if you wanted to change from Saturday to Sunday or whatever always accommodating uh, real passionate down there often went for a sandwich after the game with those lads they're really really that's where the grassroots is and they're there on merit as well without Don Sullivan. Uh, mm-hmm. will he be allowed to play the weekend it's another big question and it's, I, a, it's, it's a big enough talking point and of course to let listeners know that um, the, the last evening uh, Cremon versus Kilgarvan th- they were both without their county championship player Darren Hoolan obviously for mid Kerry Cremon and Donald Southern didn't talk out either uh, it's a big hit to take for a small club huge hit we played Cremon a few years ago and finally we were beaten by them as well and very you know Sean Sullivan Dunnock and the lads there like you know, they're very accommodating with fixtures. I think it's something that's come in, Donald, in the last number of years, since the, around the COVID in particular. There's, clubs are a lot more accommodating. They're all in the same position. But I think having to play without two marquee players, Dan Holden has been one of the standout players in the county championship. And again at the weekend, Liam, he did really well. And Donald O'Sullivan, we know all about him. He's, he's a class forward. He's in with, with Kerry. Uh, I don't know should you have to play without them being honest. Mm-hmm. I mean if, if we had a county player at home and we couldn't play him we'd we would, we would be disappointed. Yeah. And it's not having a go at anybody now uh, but it's, 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 this is their competition. It's our competition and you want your best players available.